now go on. So I mentioned that uh, uh, this is uh, this is an event that is happening uh, and that is uh, that results uh, uh, of our collaboration with the uh, Tardin organization, um, which is an art platform with diverse uh, activities. So once again. Uh, we are very happy you see here the posters of the events and activities that the organization uh, has, organized, works on. And, um, and as I mentioned, the Moving Museum of Photography exists its program since July 2018. Since we have held, uh, it's not true, 11 events, uh, uh, but already 12, this is 13. So we are very happy. Um, the photo that you see is from our first event in very favorite uh, location in Georgia, in high mountains region of Tusheti in Omalo, where we held our first event in July 2018. So for these events that uh, took place since 2018, we got uh, up to 700 attendees, even more, I have a doubt. Uh, and uh, we have featured um, in our programs 15, up to 15 Georgian regional and international artists and their works. And you see the images on the screen, you see the images of, uh, of our events. Um, uh, here are the posters uh, uh, that, we, uh, that we produced for each event. Uh, um, so it's uh, quite a couple already and we are going to continue but because the program works very well we are very happy and uh, hope you will enjoy also and from where it comes all, all, all the story of Moving Museum of Photography it's part of the project, big project that goes already for uh, three years, uh, which is called South Caucasus Photography Hub for Education and uh, Innovation. And uh, the project is uh, funded by um, uh, Swiss Agency for De Development and Cooperation. And why this hub, uh, why we wanted to create the hub, hub uh, this hub, because uh, we believe, um, uh, we believe that uh, power of photography can uh, uh, can stimulate and can become a catalyst of changes, social changes and cultural changes uh, that we need so much uh, in the in the region, in our countries. Uh, and uh, photography ha helps us also to uh, to focus on um, pressing social issues uh, uh, with environmental, cultural issues, population or sensibility, sustainability, sorry, um, as well as uh, in general human rights and uh, social justice. Uh, and the project is implemented by Tbilisi Photography and Multimedia Museum, which is the first institution uh, in Georgia that focuses on contemporary image in its different forms. It's a non-government and non-profit organization. And the organization that has been founded in 2017 by the same group of women professionals that are behind uh, other big project, Tbilisi Photo Festival, that you might know maybe because festival is 10 years old uh, already. And the both platforms together or separately, um, they, uh, they, they act in the same direction. But the uh, museum was supposed uh, to become a platform uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, activities all uh, all year round, uh, uh, which is not the case of the festival. So the museum is based in Tbilisi uh, and uh, operates uh, a lot outside of the capital. Operates also uh, in the region, and um, we have diverse couple of different programs. Uh, here you see uh, some of them, like main ones, let's say, of course, Moving Museum of Photography, uh, a pr very important production grant for female photographers. And um, we are very happy that we work actively with uh, 
Azerbaijani women photographers. You will have a chance to see works produced within this grant uh, um, in the program of the slideshow that uh, you will see just after I finish my lecture. There is Fabric of Images, uh, innovative uh, uh, courses, uh, theoretical and practical courses for teenagers and children, initiating them to photography. We are working uh, on the creation of the permanent collection of South Caucasian photography, iMediatek, which is Internet Mediatek, uh, the multimedia archive that museum, let's say, inherited from Tbilisi for the festival and that are accessible online. And also our absolutely wonderful Mediatek uh, uh, with a very precious photo book library, which is the first photo book library uh, created in Georgia. Here you see a few images of uh, the museum that we miss now very much because of the restrictions, regulation and COVID-19 spread. We are closed, of course, we are closed since uh, um, since beginning of uh, November, unfortunately, but uh, we, will, we hope we will open as soon as possible. So here you see TPMM collection wall, uh, which is a small space where we can uh, feature the parts of our printed collection because uh, alongside with multimedia rich collection, we have also as museum printed collection also inherited from Tbilisi Photo Festival. So these small exhibitions of collections, they change regularly. Here you see on these images the Mediatek, which is a like wonderful, very friendly and lovely space with a photo book, uh, <clears throat> with a photo book collection, photo book library, as well as a space uh, where it's possible to, to work, consult the multimedia archives. For example, you see here with the old computers, it's also the space where we organize talks, where we invite photographers, uh, um, local, regional or international, if, they, if, if, if, if possible. Uh, and there are also lectures held for students uh, from different high schools, uh, etc. And here you see the, the some more images of the museum that has been launched in September 2019. So very strangely, uh, the opening of this first institution focused uh, on the image on, on photography uh, and um, contemporary image in general coincided with uh, very challenging uh, COVID spread uh, um, and the pandemic. So during the year now already 14th month, we have been closed for almost six months. So it's, uh, it's challenging, but we are going through it with a lot of dignities. There are some more images from our installations, multimedia installations. We are working a lot with on multimedia and video installations. Here are more images from our projects. Uh, uh, so the space allows us to to make it as a, one of the the scissor elements and components uh, of the installations because the space is big, spacious. It's a, it's a spacious museum, so that's very interesting to work and develop projects. Uh, so here are some more images, more images of the exhibitions and installations we have organized. And uh, this is the uh, very dear to us uh, last project by French contemporary photographer Antoine Dagata, whose absolutely breathtaking work, um, Bare Life, or a virus, there are two titles. We, we have chosen Bare Life uh, is a stunning uh, and really brief taking uh, conceptual documentation of uh, uh, COVID-19 spread and the first wave um, of the pandemic. Uh, uh, Antoine Dagata was uh, photographing since the very first day of the global lockdown, he was photographing outside of Paris, as well as, as, well as in different uh, cities in France. Uh, he was uh, also photographing inside of the hospitals, even inside of the reanimation where he got access. So there, there are 13, almost 3,000 images uh, produced. 
and uh, we could uh, get uh, the um, permission and the <clears throat> permission of, uh, of Antoine to exhibit it in Tbilisi in the museum as part of Tbilisi Photo Festival but unfortunately it coincided also with new restrictions so we opened then we closed then we reopened with restrictions but I think it's a historical work and I was uh, as well as whole team of the museum we were happy to be able to show it and you will get the chance to see the smaller version in the screening program the smaller version of, of it edited by Opera de Paris uh, on, on three screens while in Tbilisi we had 11 screens uh, 11 screens installation and all I mentioned also Tbilisi for the festival so the museum wouldn't exist without years of Tbilisi for the festival experience uh, collections networks established built uh, since um, 2000, 2010 so the festival is uh, 10 years old and the most um, strange edition was this last edition uh, in September 2010 when the day of opening of the festival has become the day of the closing of the festival because of restrictions just published we were obliged to to close the museum and to close the festival just a half an hour before the opening but it's also part of our reality so we were conscious why we want it still to work and to, to prepare it but but the most important story is uh, is about why we work uh, with photography because uh, and the answer is not because wow it's cool or wow it's beautiful no because we know how the we know power of documentary image and uh, we know how much we can do with uh, with um, photography and uh, the the talk which uh, actually starts with the main topic starts now and um, I would love to say that I constructed it in a way to to to, to, to explain to the audience uh, uh, why we are working photography why the photography and especially documentary photography as a form and tool of visual storytelling is for us also a real tool uh for for changes uh, social and cultural changes i will be talking also about the let's say story or the short history of the medium in the region but mostly uh, putting accent on development of photography in georgia because this is my field but we still picked up few images in our collections uh, images uh, from 19th century uh, images produced by georgian photographers uh, in azerbaijan so we had also this and there is also soviet period very important more or less the same uh, for the in Azerbaijani photography or in Georgia, but I will be focusing uh, on, on its specificity in Georgia. And then for the last part of the lecture, I decided that I would uh, put accent on the very dynamic female scene of photography in uh, Georgia and in Azerbaijan. And here it's also again my field because we are for years and years we are working also also um, with the female photographers from Azerbaijan within grant programs or other other circumstances. And um, then the lecture once lecture ends, uh, we will go for a screening program uh, that consists of uh, Georgian photographers. Uh, Azerbaijani photographers, as I mentioned, you will see a few projects uh, from female photog of female photographers. And then we will end with uh, Antoine Dagata's Bare Life, very interesting, beautiful editing also in the version of uh, a Parisian opera, the Opera de Paris, and uh, some of the very contemporary documentary photography with a slideshow by Lens Culture. So that will be our program. But um, so what happened, the, the, we, we all know that new reality uh, and uh, opportunities for cultural development in, in South Caucasus started in early 90s, right after the collapse of Soviet Union. And um, uh, uh, 
but not only in cultural, I would say in political or economical or social, uh, um, uh, social development. Um, but uh, but it, it was an important, uh, important period, let's say like turning point. And um, uh, the major political, economic and, and social changes uh, that took place in this period defined the cultural scene in all ex-Soviet republics and then independent countries. So, and in this period, the photography becomes the dominant art on the scene of contemporary art and the most popular medium of modernity, enabling to document very quickly, that's a very important point, very quickly and radically changing reality in order to better understand it. For example, in Georgia, a lot of artists, painters, they even changed the medium and they started working in the photography because painting was, let's say, too slow uh, for this radically and quickly changing reality. And so for more than 20 years, uh, photography is used uh, as a most powerful tool for, of storytelling. And when we say it is used the way, I, I, uh, I mostly mention. Uh, I mostly mean uh, the, um, uh, let's say, occidental photography scene, um, and um, but uh, it also helped a lot to to help to increase the popularity of photography. And uh, that's how photographic events started to attract an important audience. And you see different images very beautiful uh, in my point of view and uh, you have captions to see the authors but these are um, let's say um, most important authors who especially worked in uh, in photography uh, in uh, in the region of South Caucasus uh, in uh, in 90s uh, and um, that's how they, today, more than ever, the, the regional projects and especially innovative uh, projects with innovative uh, approaches, events uh, or different programs targeting big audience and different cultural and social groups should be in place uh, in order to use the power of documentary image for deeper and more sensitive understanding of contemporary world. Uh, that uh, we live in with the uh, with the most challenging issues uh, in it. Um, now, so following the images that you see, I will just make the small notes. They come all from the 19th century collection uh, photography, 19th century photography collection. Uh, preserved uh, in the archives of uh, Georgia National Museum. The uh, collection is rather rich, uh, 15, 1, 5,000 images, uh, very beautiful images uh, um, that still need to be um, more popularized, more, more promoted, more researched. We started working with 19th century photography in, uh, in early years of Tbilisi Photo Festival. We got a great chance to work on two big exhibitions, issue resulting of these collections. Uh, uh, and um, so there are captions, you can see um, the small uh, explications for the photos. But when we talk about photography uh, in Georgia, but we can say the same, for the Azerbaijan, because more or less our countries went through uh, through the same same let's say uh, big stages, big steps, and big periods of development. And when we talk about development of photography uh, in Georgia, we uh, we talk about three big periods. Let's say golden age, which coincides uh, with the um, uh, with the beginning of this uh, European cultural innovation in the country. Um, and uh, this is like the second half of uh, 19th century. The first information appears um, in uh, 1846. Uh, the first information published by the, uh, by the newspaper Katkas uh, is dated of 1846. Then we talk about uh, Soviet period um, that both of our countries passed through. 
where the photography has been as a medium has been used as a very powerful tool of uh, propaganda, Soviet propaganda. And then we talk uh, uh, about uh, very interesting and exciting uh, contemporary period that we have, um, we have qualified as a new way in or a kind of photographic revolution, revolution that began in early 90s in a rather challenging post-Soviet period after a very painful crash of uh, the political, economic and social systems in all ex-Soviet republics, including uh, Georgia and uh, of course Azerbaijan now also and um, the same all the images are that you see on the screen are part of the same collections same collection of 19th century and um, so to go back to the very beginning and to go back also rather specific geopolitical location it should be said that it's thanks to this uh, location that uh, European innovations arrive um, uh, arrive rather quickly to Georgia. For example, first uh, cinema première uh, uh, in Tbilisi, in the capital uh, of Georgia, has been held uh, even not a full year after of Parisian uh, uh, of Parisian um, premiere in, in uh, and so it happened in Tbilisi in 1896. And while about photography, um, more than 40 or around 50 years before arrival of cinema or cinematography in, in Tbilisi, as I mentioned already, the first uh, announcement uh, of the, in the uh, newspaper Kafkas, um, that was a leading newspaper of this period, has been, has appeared in 1846 and there was the whole uh, paper, article, dedicated, uh, dedicated to, to describe the fact, uh, saying that uh, a stranger, a foreigner, with a very strange machine, uh, is uh, making the images of environment and of people so it was a big deal and it happened around seven years after after the official announcement of uh, invention of photography by uh, french academy in 1839 and um, what was interesting is that following the leading uh, european states of uh, France, England, Germany, as well as United States, uh, um, uh, not in Europe, but, uh, uh, but in, in, in America, so on the other side of the ocean. Uh, photography in Georgia became the perfect medium of modernity to record the fast changing reality of a country undergoing the industrial revolution. That is very important. Uh, so what we see in photography of this period, so it's the same, exactly the same for the photography of the European countries like French photography or photography in England or German photography. The first big topics, let's say, of photography, which is like just newborn medium and uh, intellectuals of that period are having very hard discussions whether photography can become an art or not, or what it is, etc. There are very progressive, uh, uh, let's say, ideas about photography, but even Charles Baudelaire, for example, he was saying that never ever photography can become an art, strangely, despite the fact that French portraitist Nadar made a wonderful, great, portrait, series of portraits of Baudelaire, which means that Baudelaire was very much a loving to pose to Nadar. But still, so the big topics of the beginning of photography in European countries and in Georgia are related to the Industrial Revolution. And more than that, when I was more, more than that, when I was making uh, researches uh, 
about uh, the beginning of uh, photography in Azerbaijan. Of course, the uh, uh, all related to beginning of oil production and researches in the Caspian Sea. That has become also the leading uh, leading topic uh, of photography in Azerbaijan. The same happens in Georgia, but without petrol. Uh, but construction of railway system, bridges, and ports. These are the big topics in uh, photography in Georgia. Now you see, for example, very beautiful image, uh, uh, which is taken in Azerbaijan. Uh, this is the village uh, Akhlidza. So it's one of my favorite photos, beautiful bridge with small, beautiful, um, uh, beautiful machine uh, on it. Uh, and, um, and here are, for example, uh, uh, the um, few images uh, from the collection of Alexandro Inashvili, who is the pioneer of photography in Georgia. Absolutely great guy, great personality. He was much more than just photographer. Uh, he was a, um, a philanthropist. He was supporting the um, um, talented uh, young people, uh, providing them uh, scholarships. He supported and, uh, um, and contributed a lot to the um, creation of the first theater troupe in, in Georgia. Uh, and he, uh, he, was, he inspired us, if uh, I can say this, uh, to create the Moving Museum of Photography. And why? Uh, in, um, in the second half of the uh, 19th century, um, Alexander Inashvili is born in 1846 and uh, he died in uh, uh, 98, so rather young, 52 years old, unfortunately, because I'm sure he would be able to do much more for the development of the country, its culture and for its social development as well. Uh, Alexandra, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, and he, he can be considered as a pioneer, I said, this is very important. And in the second half, uh, around 60s, he invented uh, a project that he uh, named, entitled, uh, Caucasian Moving Museum. What it was? It was a, let's say, moving exhibition. Uh, in which uh, Alexander Inashvili gathered the pieces of uh, justifying and testifying the culture of uh, Caucasus, different uh, people, different ethnic, different groups. Uh, he gathered the, the, uh, an important amount of these pieces. He, and let's say, established an exhibition and he was traveling from city to city, from village to village, to show and to put on public display this exhibition, showing the richness of uh, um, peoples and ethnics living in the Caucasus. So we have been inspired by this idea to create the Moving Museum of Photography. But of course, we said to ourselves, it's 21st century, uh, and uh, the museum should be now multimedia because it makes easier the, the movement, it makes easier to, to go to the most remote places and to, uh, and, uh, to provide, uh, to create new opportunities, educational opportunities and artistic opportunities for the communities living in these places. And we're doing uh, it, as I mentioned, in three countries. So here are some more uh, images uh, from Bagu that uh, I could find uh, in the collection uh, of Alexandro Inashvili. Sure, it will be very interesting to make more profound researches, maybe a collaboration and to dig deeper to see if there are more images made in Azerbaijan by the group of photographers who were working in Georgia. So it's um, one more idea that we can develop uh, uh, together with um, Azerbaijani photographers. It will be very interesting, uh, for example, another image, very beautiful. Uh, the same by uh, Alexandra Inashvili. You see this small uh, 
you see his name um, on the on the photography on the left side uh, you see the inscription Baku um, and uh, we go back to the uh, to the Batumi which is the port city port in in Georgia uh, on the uh, border, on southern border, uh, border with Turkey, which uh, was also extremely active city uh, and uh, developing very fast. Um, uh, and uh, of course, it has become one of the loveliest topics of photographers of that time because we are again in industrial revolution. And of course, the railway constru railway construction and the launch of the small railway stations uh, has been photographed by a group of uh, photographers working at that moment. Fortunately, the government got this great idea to send the photographers working in Georgia to document the, uh, the, the construction works as well as launch of the uh, as well as launch of the stations. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this absolutely beautiful uh, uh, collection of uh, images but again it's the same in uh, European photography we are dealing with the same topics railway station construction of buildings construction of bridges uh, etc and of course so one of the <clears throat> alongside uh, one of the <clears throat> uh, one of the um, uh, genres of photography the most developed in the very beginning of photography and the invention of photography is the portrait uh, which has become the most popular since the very beginning it's like kind of paradox it's like very quickly the golden age of portrait but as we know all it continues still because we are still while making our selfies with our smartphones we are contributing a lot that the portrait remains the most popular a popular, popular and most uh, practiced uh, genre of photography, not only among the professionals, but also among the uh, amateurs. Uh, and uh, in Georgia, it's the same. In, in Azerbaijan, it's the same also. So there is this uh, absolutely wonderful collection of portraits. And of course, the portrait, uh, a photographic portrait is accessible in the beginning, uh, more easily accessible for the new class, uh, social class, which is bourgeoisie, kind of result issue of industrial revolution and development, economic, economical development of the country, but, and also uh, aristocracy, and, uh, but uh, also the most, uh, even the most uh, precarious social uh, class, the, the peasants and uh, uh, proletars, they are also uh, putting uh, uh, their economies, securing money to be able to, to go to the portrait studios that are flourishing in Tbilisi in the second half of uh, 19th century. Um, the leading ones uh, are um, created by Alexandro Inashvili that I mentioned also, but there is also Dmitry Ermakov um, and uh, some other, Edward Klar, etc. There are some other photographers and even peasants are coming from the villages, uh, putting their best, uh, uh, costumes uh, to to go to the portrait studio. So here are all uh, as well Georgian policemen who are photographed uh, uh, in the in the portrait studios. And there is here is like, for example one of my loveliest uh, and favorite photos, the prisoners that have been photographed by Alexandra uh, Roinashuli in his studio. So the big question is uh, how he managed it. The Either he asked uh, the city prison to bring him real prisoners, either he uh, hired uh, artists or just made a cast, made a cast uh, and um, selected these two guys, got all these attribute accessories of prisoners and made the image. But that's very interesting uh, photo. Here is, I'm, I'm, I put together a few images of Tbilisi. Uh, because uh, I guess uh, most of you have visited already Tbilisi or you will plan to come once it's possible to uh, to travel again 
And uh, the images you see here, unfortunately, uh, the city has changed. But uh, change and these beautiful parts, they don't really exist in the same shape as you see on the photos. But just to say that the urban development is also one of the biggest topics of photography in the beginning uh, of the medium. Here are some more beautiful images of Tbilisi with first uh, characters appearing in the image uh, and first movements appearing in the image. image. This is the, let's say, oriental part of Tbilisi with the beautiful views. All these photos are part of the collection that we call here Dmitry Ermakov's collection, but in reality, this collection uh, uh, um, consists of uh, works of different photographers. So that there is a whole story behind how all these images they have been gathered under the Ermakov's collection. But it will be for a following webinar. Uh, and here is the European part of the city with. Uh, with the constructions by uh, European architects that were coming to Tbilisi, uh, being invited, uh, uh, being invited uh, especially to construct uh, the European style uh, uh, parts of uh, the country. For example, right image is the construction of the Téléphérique uh, uh, that functions uh, still, uh, and is the first photo. Uh, made uh, in this place. On the left side, you have the Mushtaidi Park, one of the oldest beautiful parks in Tbilisi. And here's some more um, uh, characters, uh, uh, city from the city, all these guys who were selling the fruits uh, in the city. And why, what is interesting, it's not by chance that I gathered these images, but just to show how diverse uh, are, let's say, interests of photographers to, to document not only the city, not only the development of the country, but to document also all these, let's say, city characters, very specific, very interesting. And uh, thanks to them, we can now, uh, like almost 180 years later, uh, more uh, know how the city looked and how the people inhabiting city looked also. Uh, and very lovely also, very small series I put here. This is the series by Alexander Inashvili, uh, Georgian bath, I mean, traditional bath. Uh, we were calling it, it was called before, let's say oriental bath is, but the same. Roy Nashvili reconstructs uh, in his studio. These images are not made in real bath, but in the studio of Freyna Shuri, where he reconstructed, recreated, let's say, the bath scenes to, uh, to document them. So I just put four images. So there are much more, so we can go forward to the Soviet period, uh, that Soviet period of, uh, photography that starts with the uh, occupation in 21 and that lasted 70 years. We went to, let's say, we had the parallel stories uh, during this. Uh, we, when I say we, like our countries uh, uh, uh, during this period. And the uh, Soviet period is also a very specific period in development of arts. But because you know better than I do that for Soviet regime, uh, all arts, including photography, of course, uh, were considered as two to, uh, to influence the mass, mass uh, conscience and, to, and awareness. And Soviet regime was using uh, art, including photography and cinema, first of all, um, uh, as a um, propaganda tool. And of course, it stamped uh, greatly, uh, it influenced greatly the de development uh, of the medium um, as, um, as uh, it, it, the medium was submitted, let's say, oppressed, uh, um, by the, oppressed by the existing dogmas, uh, political dogmas, uh, uh, and very paradoxical thing, uh, the most developed genre of photography during the Soviet period 
uh, in Georgia, at least, uh, um, but I would say all over the countries uh, of ex-Soviet uh, Union, we can say that, uh, in countries where photography um, has been developed and used actively, um, the most uh, developed and popular, let's say, and most used practice genre is uh, uh, photojournalism, which is a great, uh, uh, let's say, paradox because we all know what is photojournalism. Photojournalism is uh, one of these most objective uh, vision, creates the image and vision of reality, but the most objective. While in the Soviet uh, period and during Soviet uh, regime, uh, objective reality was not the, uh, the challenge. Uh, the, uh, the demand was uh, production uh, related to the production of, say, of, let's say, canonic images, politically correct photographic imagery. Why? Because uh, the regime, Soviet regime, needed uh, the image of, let's say, most powerful country with most powerful economy, with um, the, the, the most uh, strong, the strongest uh, workers, the, uh, etc. Everything, uh, everything, the the most uh, the most powerful factories, for example. And here you see a few images that are in reality very beautiful. Uh, and uh, making researches on them now, uh, after the thirty years of the end and collapse of Soviet Union, Union is uh, of course very interesting and needs to be done. Uh, and um, I would say that not really profound, uh, uh, profound researches have been done, for example, in Georgia on this period of photography, but we are doing our best. We are going uh, slowly. We can't do everything uh, in the same time, but we are making these researches and these images uh, are available, but they are, let's say, uh, perfect uh, examples of, uh, of photography of that period uh, with uh, mostly uh, mm, uh, canonic, let's say, canonic images. Uh, and of course, in this reality, it was um, almost impossible uh, and there was no space left for, let's say, photography d'auteur, which is uh, photography of real authors developing their topics, their themes. Uh, and, um, and that's why also, this is the reason why, uh, which explains uh, why uh, the whole period of Soviet photography is so poor in, uh, in the bodies of works uh, uh, of uh, real photography, the real photography daughter. But fortunately, there are some exceptions, and I will quickly go through them because the same it deserves the whole lecture. For example, one of the absolutely wonderful authors whose uh, archives we have uh, uh, we have uh, discovered by chance uh, more than ten years ago, and we work a lot on them. This is Shalwal Khanaiza, the native of High Mountain region of Georgia, Tusheti in northeast. Uh, we don't know how he have learned photography. We don't know where he got his um, his uh, cameras because the, this region is located on 2,300 around meters, uh, and uh, the connection uh, between the region and the rest of the world, even nowadays, is uh, impossible during nine months of. Uh, uh, winter time and snow, so you can imagine what it was in the 60s, but uh, he has a, we know that he has a very lovely personal story. Uh, he was sick. Uh, he was rather young, Shalwal Hanaidza, when, this, when he, he has diagnosed of um, lung uh, disease, so he could not become a shepherd as all the other men uh, in, in his village and in the region. So then starts his story of photographer. We don't know how, but he had learned to photograph. So he was following the feasts. He was following uh, 
trying to follow shepherds to photograph their life, everyday life. He was photographing this absolutely stunning landscapes uh, into Shetty and believe it, it did not change a lot, which is great. And another big series uh, of the same photographer, passport photos uh, to make his living. He was photographing his, the village guys, those who needed to make uh, passport photos. So, so he was photographing the full frame, what you see now, and then was cropping and giving uh, to those who he, who he was photographing only cropped, uh, so the head, uh, head frame. And we have discovered fortunately the full frames. So, that's great. Here, great. Here are some more images of the same authors. All these photos are, uh, are have been produced uh, between uh, 1960 uh, 1975. Five in 75, Shalwal Khanade stopped photographing. Another very interesting author, the same period, but very different spirit because he was photographing only in city in Tbilisi, it's Rezo Kezali. The same story with his archives. His archives have been very randomly, uh, just randomly discovered by, by a photographer himself, Guram Zibakashvili, that you might know because he, he often uh, exhibits in, in Azerbaijan also. So the Rezo Gezeli, the first cameraman of the TV that is supposed to open in Georgia in 1959, oh, sorry, 59, in 1959. So he's photographing his friends, uh, the, the, the ambience, the situations around him, and no traces of uh, Soviet imagery. Uh, very beautiful, very, let's say, um, leger, how to say, like very light, uh, uh, lightness of thing, let's say, is, uh, is uh, in the photos, uh, is the, can be depicted in the photos of Reza Kezali. So, something extra strange for this period uh, of, um, so this, for this period photography. So one more image from uh, Rezo Kezeli. And then of course it's time to go because um, I don't want to be very long. You have still ahead of you the screening program and we have to go now to the post-Soviet period. And uh, I decided to, um, to skip, uh, some uh, other very important photography photographers of that period, transitional period from uh, the Soviet uh, to post-Soviet and to focus only on female photographers because uh, with the end of Soviet Union, the female scene of photography is, ta is starting becoming very active, very dynamic. But the work that you see here, it's by Natalia Grigolashvili, who is, let's say, first female photographer in post-Soviet Georgian photography. And she could create her very specific, very outstanding uh, uh, photographic uh, style, let's say, signature, language, uh, and um, is still considered as one of the most important, not only female photographers in Georgia, but just photographer and artist, visual artists, also were still working very, um, very actively. It's her, uh, let's say, the most important personal, long-term, I would say, lifelong personal project. She was photographing and still is still photographing for already 30 years, her native village. Um, and here you see the images from her. And uh, with the collapse of uh, Soviet Union and the post-Soviet period, new topics arrive uh, in photography, of course, more of personalities, more, more personal stories, more focuses on uh, I, me and my inner world. So as, I'm, as I mentioned already, I have skipped to very important authors, uh, for example, Guram Zibakashvili, Yuri Mechtev, etc. But I did it um, just because I want to talk and show in this webinar uh, only female scenes, um, only female scene. Uh, and here you, you see already uh, like young uh, generation, generation that arrived in 2000s and started uh, 
developing um, uh, its, its topics, I would say, and its style from the beginning of the 21st century. Again, I would say um, without doubt that uh, uh, female scene is much more active in Georgia in photography than male scene and that the male, uh, um, male dominated profession uh, has turned now extremely female and I think the profession is just gaining for that. Uh, and another author, Anka Gujabidu, with her very, um, uh, with her very uh, interesting, deep and dramatic project, Death to Mosquitoes in the Summer Night, which is a kind of journey through Georgia. Uh, and uh, the, the temptation to depict the real, let's say, real reality of the country but trying to get uh, beyond the surfaces. So these are all images by Anka Gujabidze, very interesting project. We have worked with it, we have exhibited it and, uh, and showed also outside of Georgia. The same, these are images of Anka Gujabidze, uh, more of Georgia here. She's photographing, uh, she was working on this project uh, for almost three years. Another very interesting project of Nata Sopromanze, another extra uh, dynamic and active photographer on, uh, on contemporary scene of visual arts, a photographer who is experimenting a lot. She loves experimenting. And this project that uh, I show images of now actually is um, part of the project Broken Sea. Um, that she uh, that she worked on uh, in duo with the Russian photographer Irina Sachikova, and um, uh, so the, this is the project uh, that uses the double uh, ex exposition uh, uh, method. Uh, so there are two uh, two images on on each other, and the project. Uh, focuses uh, on the Nata is from Abkhazia, the place, the region that she left during the war in early 90s and that she couldn't um, go back to since. So Irina Sachik of a Russian photographer could go there, photograph Nata's favorite places, her, her home, her school, uh, botanical garden, where Nata used to go while child, when she was child, the beach, etc. She was photographing on film. Uh, uh, sorry, that the last image, so I will remain on it for a few seconds. Uh, uh, Irina Sachiko was photographing on film, then without developing film, she was coming back to Tbilisi, bringing the film that she already worked, I mean, shoot it already to Nata. Nata without developing is putting the same film in her camera and starting photography, photographing her places now in, let's say, new life in Tbilisi. And so you see coincidence of two images, one from Suhumi, the, the, the city where Nata lived uh, and which is not uh, now accessible for Georgians and uh, the images uh, that Nata has uh, photographed in PVC where she lives since early 90s. And then, as I mentioned, I wanted to uh, continue uh, on and mention at least, I, I can't really talk a lot because again, uh, it deserves uh, the whole lecture, the whole webinar that I would be happy to make also uh, about the female photographers from Azerbaijan. I'm very lucky that I got a chance to, to start working with female photographers uh, um, more than 10 years ago from, from Azerbaijan more than 10 years ago. And first was Rena Fendi that uh, I guess you, you all know. Uh, Rena first came in, uh, to Georgia while while working on her first long-term project, uh, Pipe Dreams. Uh, and uh, so we met, we started working together, we exhibited her work. And this is the image from, 
uh, from her more recent project, let's say, that we also exhibited last year in a big exhibition uh, uh, across uh, the mountains, uh, South uh, Caucasus, uh, South Caucasian Photography, Volume 1. It was a huge exhibition with up to 25 uh, photographers. Uh, and this is the project Liquid Land by Rena Fendi, very touching project where from one hand she, um, she gathered uh, the images, um, uh, the very documentary images of uh, uh, um, shot in, uh, in Azerbaijan and from the other hand she uses the collection of images by her father who, uh, who has the collection of uh, images, butterflies. And, uh, and the whole, uh, there's also a like, beautiful book produced out of the project. So I, uh, I wanted very much to show a few of these images, the same. Um, two more images. And, and even in the book, uh, and the whole project is uh, constructed in a way of, uh, juxtapositions, uh, butterflies, images of butterflies, fragility, and the reality that the photographer uh, sees. Um, and um, then another very interesting experience we had uh, working while, um, uh, while launching the Multimedia Lab grant for female photographers. Uh, this is another program implemented by Tbilisi Photography and Multimedia Museum in the frame of uh, the big project that I mentioned in the beginning, the South Caucasian Photography Hub for Education and Innovation. We have created the grant production grant supporting the female photographers from uh, countries of South Caucasus, including, of course, Azerbaijan. And every year we are issuing the grant allowing uh, female photographers to work during six months with an international tutor here, who is normally, uh, uh, as always, um, a renowned international photographer with connections to um, South Caucasus. And um, we are issuing also production grants. So the female photographers can work and produce the photo project on focusing on social issues in their country. So we got a pleasure to work with uh, already few uh, female photographers from Azerbaijan starting uh, from 2018. So the first edition of the uh, um, Multimedia Lab Grant for uh, Lab Grant. And this year's grantees among this year's granting well, grantees was uh, Chichek Bayramdi with a wonderful um, uh, project, um, Island in the Mountains, uh, uh, that, it, that is about community living uh, on 2,300 meters uh, in an uh, isolated uh, village. Uh, uh, very beautiful work. Um, so we hope to continue working uh, with uh, Chichek, as well as with Aitak uh, Bekmemedova, with the <clears throat> with the story "My Name Is Hamida," that uh, focuses on the condition of women in Azerbaijan as an organization that supports a lot uh, female photography. We also um, we also support the idea of. Uh, finding out more female stories out of the project that our grantees uh, uh, produced within our program. So very interesting uh, project that has been produced uh, also uh, during the uh, edition of Multimedia Lab grant of 2020. Um, more images here. All the, I should say that all these um, all these slideshows because uh, we are supporting production of uh, photo stories and then once the story is produced, the project is produced, we are editing the slideshows and then the slideshows are uploaded on uh, our web portal and especially in the section of iMediatek. I mentioned it also in the very beginning of the 
um, of the lecture. Uh, and so all these slideshows, as well as more up to 400 slideshows by uh, Georgian or regional or international photographers are visible. So you can go, it, it, there's free access, uh, you can choose the slideshows and you can uh, watch them. Uh, and so these ones are also uh, uploaded and are already uploaded despite the fact that they have been just released uh, and finished uh, like um, even not 10 days ago. So another grantee of the Multimedia Lab in 2019, Merek Bayramli, with uh, also a very nice project, Red Ribbon. Uh, so Merek, um, you will get a chance. So I didn't, I won't say a lot about because this, uh, this work will be screened in the program uh, that will follow, just follow my, um, my lecture. Um, so Nada Vahabova with, uh, with the series uh, Children of Shelter, uh, examining and focusing on the reality of uh, women who are issue of violence and who are obliged to, and socially precarious women who are obliged to, to, to, to get into the shelters with their children. Heartbreaking story, absolutely. Uh, Sitara Ibrahimova, we worked with her um, different formats uh, in the uh, in the frame of the festival as well. But this work has been produced uh, uh, within our grant program, A Woman Journey, the conceptual story. Very interesting. You will have a chance to see it also in the program. So I will just. Uh, show you these few images interesting uh, uh, interesting uh, project also focusing on the condition of women and uh, Gulnar Salimova uh, who was one of our first grantees uh, with the, the story um, predicted life of Romani women also examining the condition of uh, Romani women in Azerbaijan so that's very quickly, quickly what I wanted to say in the frame of the lecture. As I mentioned, there are, I mean, I put in the lecture a few topics that deserve uh, the whole webinars uh, to be dedicated uh, to each of these topics, but it was like the first experience, let's say, of uh, online moving museum of photography. We can do more, of course, if you if you are interested. And, uh, and now, as I have finished my uh, my lecture, we will pass to the <clears throat> to the slideshow uh, part. For this, I will be needing uh, to uh, to open. Um, sorry, uh, no, I will be needing to open the slideshow which is uh, here and uh, normally all should work. Oops, sorry, it, it seems there is a problem. Uh, I, uh, I have to go back now to... Oh, yes. Oops. Uh, it should work now. And uh, now...
uh, I need to know if you can hear the if you can hear the the, the sound because the slideshow um, because the slideshow has the sound. But uh, uh, I think uh, there is a problem. There's no sound. There's no. Yeah, sound. understand. I will share from my screen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can you please uh, stop sharing the screen? Yeah. Stop sharing.
Anam bacım kız gəlin, Əli ayağı düz gəlin, Yetdi oğul istərəm, Bircə dənə qız gəlin. Ali Təhsiliyyə, Mədəniyyət İncəsinət Universitetinin Kudralogi Fakültəsini bitirmişəm. Təhsiliniz Xurevkəndin orta məktəbinin 9-cu sinifinə qədər oxumuşam. Özüm məlməyəm, ingilis dili məlməsi, Qobstan qəsəbəsində 195 sayılı məktəbdə işləyirəm. İnteriyyər dizayn, jivopis, fəşin dizayn, təhsil. 5 ildə özünə hətə görürsünüz. Amerikada. Bu 5 ildə özümü zirvələrdə görmək istəyirəm. Буду работать в Баку, выйду замуж в Баку. Я хочу жить в Баку. Стоять в Баку, где-то без газим. Я не буду ехать, я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. Я не буду ехать. И сериально смотреть. Если я буду сейчас фантазировать, я в Манхэттене, может быть, буду. Хочу уехать отсюда и учиться работать в Америке, в Штатах. Я не востребованный человек. Я хотела бы быть востребованным человеком, понимаете? Беш ирде озуме, хэле ки дебладым ки хэле хич ирде. Сабахама келечайми, мэн озуме дар этнэм. Депрессия шамсан. Я ширам инди. Депрессия, айла инди да депрессия да ян, чох. Тэчэм дия юлдашым сэр чхэ кэдин. Нэсэ бэлэ элэ бэл чох фикир рэшрэм, хэр шэй ол чирэм, бэл чирэм. 18 yaşında kaçmışım, valideynlerimin razılığını gelmişim. Böyleyim, şu alemle kalmışım. Aile, haraşo, süper. Ama şimdi aile hayatı oldu, kent hayatını biraz başka cürdü, şehir hayatı, kent hayatı indi. Kentte çok kadar kadar olur, oraya olmaz, buraya olmaz. Sen gelinsen, gelme olmaz, kızlar kız uşağı değilsen, böyle şeyler. Tek yaşasaydım belki de meşhurlaşardım, belki de tähsilimi devam ettirirdim. Yəni, xarici ölkədə təhsil almaq istəyərdim, yəni, tip sahəsində. Bir 10 il demək olar ki, bu evdə tək yaşamışam, yoldaşım Rəsiyyə dişdiyib, Bakıda işləyib, uşaqlarımı oxuyamaqdır. İndi buradadır, tək olmuşam həmişə.
gələcək həyat yoldaşımla bugün ilk dəfə tanış olmuşum. Bu, əslində, mənim seçimim də deyil. Qırmızı lentlə bağlı son deyə bilərəm ki, mən əslində bilmirəm, bu bəlkə də hansısa asıllıqdır ya da bunun kimi başqa nəsə. Çünki mənim ölkəmdə demək olar ki, hər zaman qadınlar kişilərdən asılı vəziyyətdədir. dedi ki, bunun heç bir fərqi yoxdur. Mən düşünürəm ki, bu sadə ənənəvi bir şeydir, hansı ki biz onu öz xüsusi günlüğümüzdə istifadə edirik. Bunun arzusudur ki, bu yaşda həmin oğlanla evlənsin. Bunun mənim üçün heç bir fərqi yoxdur. Həmçinin mənim bu haqda heç bir ediyam da yoxdur. Sadəcə mənim valideynlərim istəyir. Mənim istədiyim evlənmək və gələcək həyat yoldaşımla evimi tərk etməkdir. Çünki mən düşünürəm ki, mənim ailəmlə birgə olarkən azadlığım yoxdur. Bu bizim qədim adət ənənəmizdir. Mən ənənələrə inanır və hürmət edirəm. Bunları 21 il əvvəl istifadə etmişəm və hələ də bunların sehrinə inanıram. Bu iplə xüsusən uşağın dəsmalın içində əllərini, ayaqlarını sabit saxlaması üçün bağlanılır. Bir növ azad hərəkət etməsinin qarşısı alınır. Azadlığın məhdudlaşdırılması kimi. Həmçinin çox təzadlıdır ki, onlar bu qırmızı lentlərlə ya azadlıqlarını qazanacaqlarını, ya da əksini itirəcəklərini düşünürlər.
Desor, I uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Uh, the um, uh, the screening is over. I hope you have enjoyed. You have seen very different uh, works. Um, and uh, before we end, um, I got a few questions. I identified a few questions uh, so I can answer quickly. If by chance there are some more questions, uh, you are welcome. There was a question about uh, Ermakov uh, Darius. I should say that um, uh, more or less uh, all existing information uh, have been uh, um, centralized in the book um, that uh, was edited, uh, if I'm not wrong, published, uh, if I'm not wrong, in 2012. Uh, while uh, a big exhibition uh, has been featured in the Rotterdam Photo Museum uh, and then in Tbilisi in the National Museum or in National Gallery. Um, and there is a big book publication that followed and accompanied the exhibition. And uh, in this book, you can find uh, a lot of information. Uh, I should say also that the Dutch um, museum uh, as well as Dutch uh, foundation worked during years, uh, more than 10 years on uh, restoration uh, of the uh, collection of Ermakov and on the creation of the preservation conditions in the National uh, Museum of uh, Georgia. So this exhibition was also kind of sum, summer, summarizing this long uh, term project and uh, a book was part of the um, of this like final uh, uh, let's say events uh, planned uh, that aim at featuring and uh, showing the, the the work works gathered in the collection so all information that can be found is uh, in this book um, we have it in the uh, library in Tbilisi, but uh, you can't come, I guess. Uh, but you might find uh, maybe online, maybe it's, it's uh, findable still. Then there was another question about uh, Roinov's uh, studios and ateliers. So Roinov really had uh, in Tbilisi three, uh, three studios, uh, the, the leading ones all in the central, uh, on the central avenue, which is now Rustaveli Avenue. Uh, and um, one of the attendees was asking about this atelier as uh, she or he, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I did not, uh, no, I, I, I did not uh, take a note. Uh, the um, say, was saying that uh, there is a image of, uh, of grand, grandfather, uh, portrait uh, made in the atelier of uh, Roy Nashuri. So it's very possible because he was one of the leading uh, portraitists and photographers of his time. And you're just very lucky to have uh, your grand grandfather photographed by Alexander Roy Nashuri. And then there was another question whether it's possible to make a webinar on focusing on uh, uh, storytelling. And um, yes, I guess I, I think there should be even webinars running uh, with a focus on storytelling specificity. Uh, we did not we did not do it, um, but um, either you can search to find if you are interested in. Uh, either we might have it in mind and. Uh, plan following events if we are still obliged to make them happen online and we can't travel to Azerbaijan because of the epic situation, we might have it in mind and uh, make happen a webinar uh, uh, on that. Um, I will see if there are some more questions. Uh, um, um, I, maybe I, I read. Um, Okay, um, okay, there are um, 
can we say about Alexander Renashvili's influence on Oskar Schmerling, whose postcards and caricatures were popular in Caucasus Regia? Where are the war photographers from Caucasus? Uh, uh, I will start from the second part. Uh, the war photographers, uh, uh, for example, we um, also rather recently we started working with another archives. Uh, and um, thanks to this archives, we have identified uh, the body of work uh, of first female Georgian uh, war photographer who is also in the same time just first female Georgian photographer, Nina Georgiadze. Uh, she has photographed during, uh, um, during the, or the whole Caucasus Front, so during the First World War, World War the First, um, and she was photographing on the Caucasus Front, where she was also serving as Red Cross sister in 1914-1917. So very interesting collection. Uh, you can check uh, out uh, a little bit more about this collection on our Mediatek. We have produced also a slideshow. So it's Nino Georgiadze. I can give you the name here, Nino Georgiadze. Uh, so first female photographer, first female uh, war photographer. There's the interesting um, collection uh, uh, gathering the uh, like flowers and uh, also like the uh, medical situations on the front. Uh, as well as um, military technique, and there is everything, and it's very interesting. Uh, if you mean uh, the war photographers from that period, we don't know much about it. If you mean uh, war photographers from Caucasus uh, contemporary period, uh, that's uh, that's another story, and there is another very interesting and rich. Uh, uh, rich uh, collections uh, related to the foreign photographers who have been photographing uh, in uh, in the Caucasus uh, after mostly after the collapse of Soviet Union. But the same, it's like the separate webinar needs to be organized on on that. We can do it. Um, then. Um, so the, I, I will try to identify some other questions. Uh, uh, there will, uh, and wishes of many to all the industries. Uh, the, so I, I read the question. Uh, Dear Nestan, you talked about some values, even the role and the wishes of women uh, according to all the industries and restrictions caused by general values. I mean the urge to live by accepting everything. I think it was focused uh, in the Women's Journey project. Um, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I don't uh, follow the line of the question, um, but yes, so uh, values, wishes, conditions, and restrictions caused by general values. I mean the urge to live by accepting everything. I think it was focused in a woman's journey. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid I didn't get the punchline of the question, but I agree that in Sitara Ibrahim was a project, a woman's, uh, uh, a woman's journey um, in a very interesting ways is uh, presenting, presented the, in a very conceptual, documentary conceptual way a way is presented to photographs a vision of women condition. So that's what I would say now because uh, I, I, I don't follow the punchline of the question, so it's my fault, I'm sorry. So which are the main things in future according to photography and themes? What is necessary to show? What are you able to show? Oh, very, very general question. And for that, we will be needing to analyze a little bit uh, the, let's say, the ev evolution of the medium and how the medium is used, uh, medium of photography, because uh, it has, uh, let's say, few functions and uh, 
So it can cover, it can, I mean, photography can be the documentation of reality. Photography can be the uh, reflection uh, on uh, not at all documentary topics. Uh, photography can be pure conceptual uh, um, art. So there are um, why I love photography because there all is possible in that. And uh, but what I see more and more is um, that there is kind of uh, um, new, let's say, new the the new turn in the medium is like use of technologies use of uh, use of uh, not only very uh, uh, sophisticated technologies uh, in creation of photographic image but also using uh, some processes and process to to make photographic image diverse uh, even for example the project that you have seen uh, I think you, I, I hope, I hope you enjoyed the, the work by Antoine Dagata, which has been um, uh, produced uh, with a thermic camera, camera that depicts the, um, the heat and the temperature of uh, bodies and objects, and that creates, that is able to create this very, very, different, uh, different uh, aesthetic image. Uh, so this kind of uh, temptations and attempts are more and more frequent in photography. And so we should think that that will be also one of the paths that the medium, medium will uh, take for its development. But in the same time, the old uh, classical uh, analog photography is here also with all its charm and um, and I don't see uh, uh, it won't. Of course, it has been reduced by the digital photography, the volume uh, of analog photography. Uh, but um, I, I can't even imagine uh, the, the the moment when it stops existing. It, it's it's impossible. So all all, all ways of um, all ways of development of photography, as in like. It, in general contemporary art. We see now the role of science in it, we see the role of uh, total experimentations, combining science, art, uh, activism, uh, uh, all kind of uh, mediums that has become the contemporary art also is becoming very uh, interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary. So I think it's uh, more or less, um, uh, more or less, the future of the of the visual arts. So very interesting uh, in in my understanding. Um, are you planning to con to continue grant programs and collaborations with the photographers from Azerbaijan? Yes, definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, there is a running program, multimedia lab production grant and we will announce following uh, next edition uh, early next year so if you are interested uh, please um, uh, please be attentive and follow us on our pages we will announce it with the same schema as always uh, there will be uh, six seven uh, photographers seven photographers uh, selected from three countries of South Caucasus. They will get the production grant to finish or start, uh, to finish ongoing project or to start a new project on social issues um, um, uh, in, uh, in their country. So in, your, in, in case of Azerbaijan, in Azerbaijan. We will provide the long-term mentorship led by international artists uh and there will be online skype sessions but it was conceived as such it's not because of pandemic even in pre-pandemic period we were working this way and then once projects are finished uh, we will produce the slideshow and we will upload it on uh, museums uh, inter internet uh, mediatek and we will promote it 
so you are more than welcome to to take part in the in the open call uh, that will be announced um, in February 2021. Uh, I'm looking at if there are some more questions. Maybe I missed something. Uh, thank you, Fish Wings. Uh, and um, sorry, I think. Um, uh, I think that's uh, more or less all because we can continue endlessly. Uh, uh, but uh, I was already long in my presentation. The slideshow was all, also long. Uh, and maybe we finish this time with the hope to meet again online. The spiritual space uh, gives us uh, unlimited uh, possibilities uh, to communicate. Uh, I would love to thank uh, our partners, Targino. Um, it was a pleasant and efficient uh, collaboration, so thank you very much. Uh, I would love to thank uh, especially Elina Valaite um, from uh, Tbilisi Photography and Multimedia Museum, who, who is not visible, but who uh, enables that uh, everything uh, is set up and works. Thank you, Elina. And uh, uh, I, I would love also to thank you all the attendees for your attention, for your time. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, we might be thinking about uh, organizing more events uh, uh, with our uh, Azerbaijani partners. So thank you again and take care. We are living in uh, trying times. <laughs>